Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 114, and what we're going to do today is discuss current. Now, if you remember from yesterday, we talked about the fact that we needed three things for current to exist in the first place, and that was a closed path, metal, in order to have a conductive path for the electrons to flow because of the seal of electron model, and we needed to give him a push. So those three things were required in order for current to exist in the first place. Now the first thing I want to discuss today is the fact that when we have current flowing through a wire, we have two different directions that it could act. Now we know today that electrons are the ones that move in a circuit. The electrons are going to move away from the negative terminal because of repulsion and attracted to the positive terminal of the battery because of attraction. Now that wasn't always known by scientists. In fact, originally scientists used to think that it was the protons that moved or the positive charges. Now the positive charges would be pushed away from the positive terminal and moved toward the negative terminal. And this is how scientists believed it was um, working for many years. So what happened was eventually we found out that the electrons were the ones that moved. But so many people were stuck in their own ways, their old ways, about the protons moving that they didn't want to change their textbooks and they didn't want to change the way they thought of electricity. So what happened was we ended up with two different directions for the current to flow in a circuit. The real way, which is what we call the electron flow, which is from negative to positive, or the protons moving, which is what we now call conventional current. Now, some textbooks use conventional current as the basis for a, a current flowing in an electric circuit, and others use the electron flow. So it's important that you read your textbook and understand which method they're using. If it says electron flow, the current is going to flow from negative to positive. If it's conventional current, however, it's going to be moving from the positive to the negative terminal. Either way, the math still works out properly, but you need to watch out for whether or not you're talking about electron flow or conventional current. Now, Andre Ampere was the one who defined the electric current flowing through a circuit. And what he did is he defined it as the amount of charge flowing through a point in a given time. Now, that is a rate of current flow. And it's important that we remember that it's not the speed of the electrons flowing, it's just the volume of charge flowing past a given point in a given time. The electrons are not um, racing around the circuit um, like, like cars would in a, in a Mario Kart type game. In fact, what's happening is the electrons are in a, a big mass. They're being pushed and, and they're almost in a, in a mob. With the battery turned on or the power supply turned on, it gives them a push, almost like a downhill uh, motion where they're being moved through the circuit. So it's almost like they're herded throughout the, the circuit as they move through um, the different components in the circuit, a resistor or a lamp or whatever uh, you happen to have. So when we're dealing with current flow, we're dealing with the rate of the volume of charge flowing, kind of like we're not going to be able to determine how fast an individual molecule is moving in a river as opposed to um, how quickly the molecules are moving in mass. So when we deal with current, we're dealing with the volume rate of flow. There's an equation that deals with the um, current in a circuit, and that's I equals Q over T. And I think of it as I am a cutie. Now, I is the symbol for current. We use I to represent the current, and it's used um, as, as our variable. The unit for current is named after ampere, and it's the amps. Q is charge, measured in coulombs, and T is time, measured in seconds. So the ampere is defined as the coulombs per second. So when we deal with a circuit, that is going to be the current flow in your circuit based on the number of amperes. In your house, you have a circuit breaker or a fuse box that regulates the amount of flow give, given to each section of your house, each of the circuits. Typic, typical values for circuit breakers are 15 or 20 amps. That means 
if you have more than 15 or 20 amps flowing through a given section of the circuit, it's going to trip the circuit. It's going to turn off. And the reason that's the case is because too much current is going to produce too much electrical resistance and friction, and that byproduct is heat. If there's too much heat in a circuit, that's going to cause the insulation around the metal wire to actually melt and possibly catch your house on fire. So if you try to push 50 amps through a 15 amp rated wire, that's going to have too much friction, it's going to have too much heat buildup, and it actually is going to melt and possibly catch your house on fire. So a circuit breaker's job is to protect you from fire. In fact, what it does is it allows um, a safety switch. If it gets too hot, the circuit will turn off. So 15 amps or 20 amp circuits are common in your house. If you exceed that value, the circuit or the fuse will blow and you'll have to replace that or turn the switch back on. So when we're dealing with current, we're dealing with possibly electron flow, which is the, the method that is actually the case, or you could be dealing with conventional current, which is the proton flow, which is the old method where the stubborn physicist wouldn't change their, their thinking. When we're dealing with that, we have an equation. We can do I equals Q over T to figure out the value for current in amperes. And that is the number of coulombs per second. That's it for today, and I thank you. Now, once we have the conditions that exist for current to flow, the electrons are going to move through the wire. And if I simulate a wire here, here are the electrons, of course not to scale. What's going to happen is if we have a negative side to the battery versus a positive side, the electrons are going to flow from the negative to the positive terminals. Now, when we have a battery in a circuit, we denote it with alternating long and short lines like this. The short end is the negative terminal. And the way I think about it is it looks like a negative sign. The long end is a positive terminal. And the way I think of that is you can break that in half and create a plus out of it. So I took the line, break it in half, I make a plus. So what would happen is the electrons, if I were to draw a circuit, would flow from negative to positive. And we know that because we know that electrons are the ones that move in the circuit. But originally, when scientists discovered electricity, they were under the impression that the protons were the ones that moved. So when they came up with this direction of current flow, they were assuming the protons in the circuit were moving, the positive charges, and they were wrong. But once they found out it was the electrons that actually moved, they were stubborn. So you'll see some books that still use positive to negatives as the direction of current flow. And we just have a name for that now. It's called conventional current. And the other one, the correct way that we know of now, we discuss as the electron flow. So when you're doing practice problems, make sure that you read it carefully. Are they asking you about the electron flow or the conventional current? Either way, when you do your calculations, you still get the same number. So the magnitude of the answer is correct. It's just a matter of whether or not you're flowing in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction if they ask for the direction of the flow. But just read for the words electron, which is electrons moving, or conventional, which is code for stubbornness, and the proton moving. So the direction of flow is based on the old methods, conventional, or what we know now as the actual motion, which is the electrons moving from negative to positive. And in either way, it's the direction of the repulsion of the charged particle from the terminal that has the same charge to the one that has the opposite charge. Now, current is defined as I. The symbol uh, is I, and it's the rate of flow of charge. So it's Q over T. Remember, anytime there's a rate, you divide it by time. So I is current, and it's measured in amperes, capital A. Q is charge, and that is, of course, measured in coulombs, capital C. And T is time, measured in seconds. Now, 
it is not how fast the charges are flowing. It's, it's a rate of volume. It's how many are flowing past a given point in a given time. So it is not the speed of the electrons, but a measure of the amount or I'll say volume of flow. Now basically, the electrons are all bunched together in the wire. There's no shortage of electrons. It's not as if this single electron is just going to travel the path and then wrap around and wrap around and wrap around. There's a conga line almost, if you will, of electrons. So as you have the push from the battery or the power supply or whatever you have, this electron is bumping into the next one, which is bumping into the next one, which is constantly sending the electrons through the wire. Now, of course, it's not an orderly line. It's more of a mad mob uh, dash from one end to the other. We call it electron drift because the electrons are basically bouncing as, you know, randomly, if you will. And it's not a, entirely random, but in the direction of the positive. But they're, they're hitting objects. They're hitting the side of the, the, the wire. They're hitting each other. And the general flow is, in this case, for the electron flow to the right on this, on this video. Now, if we were to calculate it, we would just need the number of charge. So maybe they tell you it's, you know, 30 electrons. And it takes uh, a microsecond to have 30 electrons pass a certain point um, in the circuit. So what you need to do is find the total charge of 30 electrons. And the way I would do that is I'm going to do I equals 30. I'll just do 30 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Each one has a charge of one elementary charge. And the time is 1 times 10 to the negative 6 seconds micro is 10 to the negative 6. So if I were to do my calculation, I'd hit 30 times 1.6 e negative 19. And I'm going to divide that by 1 e negative 6. And I'm going to get a q of 4.8 times 10 to the negative 12 amperes. Now in your home, you may have a circuit breaker in your house, which is a box with a number of switches, usually left to right they go. Um, and there's two lines of switches. Each one of these switches is going to be a circuit. And it usually deals with a number of outlets in your house. Or if it isn't outlets, it could be devices, such as lamps or um, overhead lights or things like that, maybe fans. Well, what happens is if there is and typically they're 15 amps, maybe 20 amps. Some can be higher. But that's a measure of the maximum amount of charge, um, current flow, that it will allow through that circuit until it trips. And when the circuit trips, it turns off. So there's a little spring mechanism in there. And there's a bimetallic strip that heats up. And when that gets too hot, 15 amps, it, it gets too warm. And it will trip and cause the um, circuit to, we call it to trip or to turn off. Well, the reason that's the case and you are sending that much current through the circuit, it's heating up the wires. And 15 amp circuits usually have a certain thickness of the wire, certain gauge wire. 20 amps might be a little thicker wire. But if you try to put 20 amps through a 15 amp circuit and the wire is thinner, it's gonna cause the wire to heat up too much, possibly melt. And you can have a situation where you'll heat up uh, the wires in the wall. They'll start to catch fire. And you can burn your house down. So the circuit breaker is not there to annoy you and turn off things when you try to you know, run a, a new device, maybe your toaster or a microwave or possibly a, um, a coffee, uh, coffee pot or something like that. What it's there for is to protect you from overheating your circuits and burning your house down. So in this case, where we calculated 4.8 times 10 to the negative 12 amps, that's a really small value. But in your house, you can have values in the whole number of amps. But that's very dangerous, and you can definitely get electrocuted with that kind of current flow. But that's current, and that's how you calculate. I equals Q over T, or as I like to say, I am a QT.